Okay, it's 4 p.m. on Thursday, April 12th, 2018. We have a quorum, so I call this New Orleans Public Library Board meeting to order. First item is the approval of the agenda, which everyone has printed in front of them. Uh, <coughs> I've not heard of any changes that needed, so I will uh, make a motion to approve the agenda as it's printed. Do I have a second? I will make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Any corrections, additions that anybody knows of? Okay, not hearing any. Then all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Now we'll approve the minutes from the March 8th, 2018 Library Board meeting, which everyone has printed out in their packets. And hopefully everyone's had a chance to read through them. Um, so I will entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes. So move. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion, corrections, additions? Okay, hearing none, then all in favor say aye. 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 Any, oppo any opposed? <coughs> motion carried. Then we also had a special library board meeting on March 19th. So those minutes are included in this packet as well. And so I will uh, entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I so move. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the special library board meeting held on March 19, 2018. Any uh, discussion, corrections, additions? All right. Then all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carried. Now we'll roll into a couple financial reports. First we'll do the March 2018 and then we'll, after that we'll go into the final 2017 report. Uh, Chris? Thank you. Uh, March 2018 begins on page 8. We're a quarter of the way through 2018. Our budget is about 22% expended. We did pay the annual overdrive subscription. That's $3,000 in March. It's reflected in audiovisual supplies. We pay at the county level. And so uh, historically, and again this year, New Alm Library paid the entire amount and will be reimbursed by the other four Brown County Public Libraries. We go by the population of our municipalities. And so New Alms portion this year is $2,047.23. Over the course of the next month or so, we'll get uh, reimbursed for that uh, $9,050 or so from the other libraries. Uh, note that payment of the HVAC unit, which was 8146, is reflected in library exterior renovation. And you won't see that on page 8. Uh, you will see that on page 9. It is the very last line, uh, library exterior renovation, 8146. And that, uh, of course, was not budgeted. Any adjustments from fund balance to cover that will be done about a year from now. <laughs> fund balance currently is at about 45% of this year's annual operating budget. Best practice is 35% to 50%. So I'd be happy to answer any questions about 2018. Okay, and then the final 2017 report begins on page 16. Our budget was approximately 96.5% expended, and that translates to $27,430.15 under budget in expenses. In addition, revenues exceeded what was budgeted, primarily because of taxes, uh, including some delinquent taxes, and those are never budgeted. Those are just taxes that in previous years had not been collected, and they were collected this year, and then they're distributed to, around the department's um, you know, some years were under on taxes collected, and this year we were over in taxes collected. And so uh, that translated to $11,283.15 more in revenue than anticipated. So all told, we're almost $39,000 added to the fund balance, and that's why we're at 45% uh, at currently. So those additional taxes, is that under miscellaneous then, or where is that? Um, that shows up, if you look at page 17, the first two lines uh, show taxes general, and you can okay. see the variance that favorable of uh, 1942.85, and then the second line is taxes delinquent. We are favorable 5,339.31. If you 
um, look about in the middle of the page where revenue total shows we were favorable $11,283.15. Okay. Now that includes we were over a or, um, ahead a little bit on copy fees, uh, miscellaneous um, interest operating pooled cash, which is something that the city clerk's treasurer's office takes care of. So when they add up everything, that's how it shook out this year. And then um, just for you to keep track, um, as I do on a monthly basis on where our fund balance sits, it actually shows up on the balance sheet. And that shows up uh, this month. I'm going to have you go back to page 14. And it's the third line down. It's called Fund Balance Unreserved Undesignated, showing $357,935.86. So at the end of this year, if we are over our budget, it will come out of that. Any other questions? All right, thanks. Now we'll go into the librarian's report. First up will be the library de department activities report and statistics, and then also a follow-up on annual report statistics. Chris? Thanks. That begins on page 24. Lisa Sieve, our reference librarian, and I are supposed to be leaving for Washington, D.C. this Sunday. <laughs> we'll see how that turns out. <laughs> uh, it's the project um, meetings are to begin Monday morning, and I'm really excited we got our agenda. We're going to be at the Library of Congress two days. We're going to be at the Museum of African American History and Culture for a day, and then we're going to be at the D.C. West End Library for a couple of days. Really excited to get some hands-on training uh, as well as tours. And they have us scheduled throughout the day, and then we'll have the evenings to do some touring on our own. Um, we participated in a video conference on March 22nd, so we got to know some people. We also have an online platform that we're getting to know, so we are making some contact with the folks out in D.C. And we produced, we didn't, NewCat produced a six-minute video for us. One of our jobs the first day that we're there is to introduce ourselves, and we could do it any way we wanted to, and so we asked the guys at NewCat if they would help us do a video. So it's a lot of fun. Um, I, I think we can show it to you next month. Uh, if mm -hmm. if that'd be okay you can see what we shared Fun. with them we went to um, Turner Hall and we went to Shell's and we went to the Gog House and uh, the uh, new cat folks just did a fantastic job putting that together our youth services librarian Jan Caveney is on the committee for safe and healthy streets um, she went to a, a meeting March 22nd here in New Alm that's part of the hearts beat back heart of New Alm project I'm continuing to work with the Minnesota Library Association's Legislative, Le Net Legislative Legwork Committee, and I am co-presenting tomorrow morning on local advocacy, talking about the Brown County story, particularly as it relates to the county commissioners and our um, work with them uh, to ask for and receive increased funding the last couple of years. I'm also presenting with Ann Hokinson, who's our TDS Executive Director, and then a couple of folks uh, who also are on the legwork committee at the state level. And uh, let's see, I am attended the League of Minnesota City Safety and Loss Control Workshop yesterday in Sleepy Eye and really got some good ideas, including how I'll be coming to you with an updated policy on our bulletin boards. So uh, I thought it was a worthwhile day spent out there. I'm going to move ahead to our stats. Nothing much uh, out of the ordinary for our userful stats uh, or our circulation statistics for the month. Um, you do see our overdrive went up a little bit in March, so that was positive over a year ago. Looking at page 32, that's our door count by month, and so we have a quarter under our belt for using the actual door counters. And if you multiply those numbers by four, that's going to put us at about 100,000 for attendance for door count, which is just amazing. And I'm really excited because our big months, of course, are the summer. 
So we'll see what happens. And then last month when I talked to you about the annual report, I mentioned Blue Earth County's uh, material circulation. And so page 33 and page 34 talk about specifically um, their <coughs> physical materials is just about double what New Alms is on a monthly basis. And that's the first chart um, that is shown for example, this past March, our physical circulation of items was about 11,000 and Blue Earth County's was just shy of 24,000. When you look at electronic material circulation, Blue Earth County is circulating more uh, percentage more than we are. And if you look at page 34, you can see that New Alms circulation of electronic materials in 2017 was about 5% or just at 5% and uh, Blue Earth counties is nearly 8% of their total circulation. So they're driving um, the overdrive circulation greater than any other library. They also are the largest so that would make sense. Just wanted to follow up on those statistics. Page 35 and 36 um, after I submit the annual report, which I did right after our meeting last month, to the state, the Public Library Association sends me an email and asks me to add some more statistics. They pull from the annual report and then they ask for a few more pieces of data. And then they provide a, a brochure where they've pulled those numbers to kind of give New Alm a little story about how things are going here and just a couple of items on page 36 I thought uh, were interesting. If you look at um, the financial which is the bottom right hand side total expenditures per capita for us is $55.74. Now that is about it's a little bit more than what every um, what per capita New Alm residents are paying for library services, but it's fairly even. So I'd be happy to answer any questions about the follow-up or the uh, librarian's report. All right, not hearing any questions, we'll move on to programming. Uh, April. in your packet you have these stats for attendance on programs for the past month um, do you have any questions on those all right I'll move on to the upcoming programs on Tuesday April 17th at 6 30 p.m. we have the Minnesota Valley Civil War Roundtable John Labatt will be presenting Fort Ridgely that evening on Thursday April 19th at 6 p.m. We have Twilight Tunes featuring the Armstrong, Armstrong Boulevard Brass Quintet. <laughs> um, and they'll be playing some pop music, some easy listening. I think it should be a fun evening for everyone who joins us. On Saturday, April 21st at 1.30 p.m., we have author Kathleen Baxter, who's coming to the Wandagog House to talk about Wandagog, Maud Hart Lovelace, and Laura Ingalls Wilder. She has written a book about those authors, including her... Um, pilgrimage to see them during college and so it's kind of a revisitation of her love for those authors and an exploration of their lifetime in this area. Um, what, tours of the Wanda Gog House will be available for those attending the event that's free. On Tuesday April 24th at 8 30 a.m. Chris will be leading an introduction introduction to Ancestry Library Edition at the library. Um, we want to remind those who are interested that they do need to register for that program. Um, and we have moved a lot of our <coughs> registration to online registration and we're happy to help patrons who need some help with that um, either by calling the library or stop into our service desk. On Tuesday, April 24th at 7 p.m. we have the continuation of the Life Living series. This is a rescheduled event. Tony Shuda will be coming to talk about um, raising a selfless child in a selfie world. On Thursday, April 26th at 6.30 p.m., sci-fi and fantasy author Christopher Schmitz will be joining us at the library to talk about his writing and his books. And if you're part of the sci-fi fantasy book group or are interested in joining that group, they will be attending that event together. I can answer any questions on those events. I'm interested in um, 
twilight tunes, whether the attendance will be up for that as opposed to noon tunes? or We did have our first twilight tunes um, at the beginning of March, and attendance for that wasn't up from what it was, but I'm hoping that we'll see more on this event. Maybe they'll get used to that, that yeah. it's not in the evening. Mm -hmm. Um, I can share also, we have some upcoming children's events. Um, the Teen Literature Conference is May 12th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Chaska High School. Jan Caveney, our youth services librarian, will be taking a bus up for that event. So if anyone is interested, they can register online or call the library and we'll help you get registered for that. Um, students in grades 6 through 12 um, are welcome to join us for that event. On Saturday, May 12th at 10 a.m., uh, children's author Julie Gassman will be reading her book, Do Not Bring Your Dragon to the Library, along with some of her other children's books. I do want to mention the special story time with New Orleans own Fair Trade Store. That's Wednesday, May 2nd at 6.30 in the evening. So they'll be reading stories uh, and talking about items that come from um, developing countries around the world. Any other questions I can answer about programming? All right, thank right, you. Thanks, April. Okay, now we've got a staffing update, uh, library page, and Chris? Yes, and since I uh, did this agenda, there's uh, it's more of a staffing update. Uh, we have Zach Lingle joining us uh, as a library page. He was with us six or seven years ago when he was a senior in high school and has come back, so it's great to have him. Uh, and he picked up right where he left off. It's Paging is like riding a bike, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also have a new volunteer. This is a decent place to mention that. Um, let me get to page 24. Angie Novotny, uh, she's a teacher who lives in New Ulm, and she is working on some of our fire department digitization uh, items. We are, have so many because retired firefighters have been going through them and writing uh, descriptions on them and helping us sort. And our one volunteer um, is just not able to keep up with it. And so we've brought another volunteer on uh, to help prepare as much as we can for their 2020 anniversary. That'll be 150 years of the New Orleans Fire Department. We also learned that uh, longtime library aide Diane Pinker Baranek is retiring, and her last day will be April 30th. So uh, human resources will help uh, with the recruitment process in replacing that position. All right, then we'll move on to a building update. Chris? Uh, more like a building no update on <laughs> <laughs> the roof or the PU PUC switch. Nothing to report on that. However, uh, we will be doing the sidewalk repair project that you approved uh, last fall, and it was too cold to actually do the project. Cottonwood Valley Concrete will be coming soon. Now, if that means next week or, you know, who knows with this weather. Uh, sure, sure that's not going to be next year. <laughs> <laughs> who knows at this rate. Um, however, uh, just a note on the payment of that, it's a $1,648.06, and if you take a look at page 9 of your packet, and you go about three-fourths of the way down the page to contractual maintenance building, it was budgeted for $7,000 for this year, and if you look at the column right next to it it's 864806 as the current total budget that was money that was carried over from <coughs> 2017 so the money that you approved last year carried over to this year and that's how the it will be paid for so what exactly how much are we paying $1648.06 okay and that will just take care of some of the uneven spots in the back. It's not all we need to replace, but it's a good start. And then uh, Jan Caveney and I met with um, a designer to start talking about the children's room and how we want to perhaps give it a, a nice facelift. And this is coming out of talks during our strategic planning process. 
Jan is writing an article for the paper asking for people from the public who wish to be on a committee to express their interest. We also have reached out or will be reaching out to a local interior designer uh, to be part of that committee. I'm right, Margaret, correct, that you were interested in being on that yeah, committee? Yeah, I've already talked to Jan about it. Fantastic. Was there anybody else from the library board who is interested? Um, these meetings are going to take place over the noon hour um, during the week, and it'll be about twice a month, up to six months probably. Okay. If you do change your mind about that um, or want to do that during the summer, uh, certainly let us know there's absolutely um, you're welcome to join us and I think that's it on our building report any questions on that all right then we'll move into landscaping update and the landscaping uh, has been really an interesting process because uh, we were concerned about the slope of the sidewalk that goes up to the wooden doors now this isn't the public sidewalk. This is the library uh, that went right in front of Wanda and then takes a left and goes straight to those doors. Well, not only is the slope that's parallel to the building um, too steep, so is the sidewalk that goes up to the wooden doors, and so is the cross slope of the sidewalk that's parallel to the building. So it's just as Elwood said, it's not that you can't do the project, but you, we would have to rip everything out. And so the Wandagog uh, Sculpture Committee is kind of revising their ideas for the landscaping and turning it into a flower bed with benches. Mm. The, the reason for that was the intent of making it uh, accessible per ADA requirements. Exactly. Exactly. And so they are doing some fundraising, some grant writing, and working with a local contractor to come up with a design for a flower bed. And they'll be bringing that to the landscaping committee uh, for uh, preliminary approval that will <clears throat> then come to the full library board. And the landscaping committee has been Holly, Dave, and Vince. If that continues to be okay, then we will carry forward. We talk a lot about about that and I would be one person that having to use it and I would not complain at all but there are people around who if everything isn't perfectly the way it's supposed to be will complain so if if they're trying to if we're trying to lay something down there so it's actually used the way am I'm understanding it is the city's either does it by 100% code or they don't want to do it at all. Is that basically it? Absolutely, yeah. yes. And the Wanagog committee doesn't have, they got basically a shoestring budget. Yeah. So there's no way they can afford to do you know, all this work without some outside assistance. Mm -hmm. and we already it, have benches that we need to put, or that we want to put there. Mm -hmm. So that's part of our thought too, is the benches have to be accessible some way to well they d actually don't have to be if we put in a flower bed and we put benches as long as we don't create a walkway as long as we don't create a walkway mm -hmm. if someone wants to walk in there they're certainly welcome to but we're not creating a path mm -hmm. if we create a path it has to be accessible to all I see. now creating a path means we purposely put something down there it doesn't mean people walking on it a dozen times and now you've got a dirt pa Correct. path I mean that's not the definition of creating a path correct and that's exactly what we figure will happen mm -hmm. is people will just create their own path that way mm -hmm. so. all right any other discussion concerning landscaping all right then we'll move on to the action items we got a couple of them today the first one is on page 37 and it's resolution number 2018-13, first reading and adoption, approving <coughs> the January 1st, 2018 through March 31st, 2018 donations and memorials. <coughs> the attached list describes donations received by the library between January 1st, 2018 and March 31st, 2018. The library board of the 
the li you know, library board of the New Ulm Public Library accepts these donations with gratitude to the donors. Um, if you look at the, the listing, it's mostly cash donations, but there are some non-cash. And the estimated total value uh, with, you know, throwing in an estimated value for the non-cash is uh, about $2,807.90. So I will uh, entertain a motion to accept the uh, donations and memorials from the January 1st, 2018 through March 31st, 2018 period. I so move. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, not hearing any, then all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carried. The next resolution is on page 41. It's resolution number 2018-14, first reading and adoption, and it's awarding the bid for carpet replacement. The library sent requests for bids pertaining to replacing carpet in four areas of the main building. Photos are attached for your reference. Uh, one, it, the first area is the service center where they're going to replace the carpet with vinyl <coughs> plank flooring. Second area is the entry near the book drop. Replace the carpet again with vinyl plank flooring. Third area is the stairs to the adult fiction and adult nonfiction. Replace the carpet with new carpet. And then the fourth area is the meeting room, which is replacing the carpet with new carpet. And the meeting room, that's the one in the basement? Yes. Okay. So bids were sent to five vendors, and three vendors submitted quotes. The bid request and quotes are attached. Regarding the vinyl plank flooring, the request for bids did not indicate a level of wear measured in mills. Hiller's bid is for 28 mil. New Orleans Furniture's bid is for 22 mil and Pullman's bid is for 28 mil. The request for bids also did not specify a particular warranty. The manufacturer's websites indicates their commercial warranties are as follows. For Hiller commercial floors, 10 years for carpet, 12 years for the vinyl. New Orleans furniture, 10 years for carpet, 20 years for the vinyl. Pullman lumber, seven years for carpet, 30 years for vinyl. The bid totals came in as follows. Hiller Commercial Floors, 9,200. Pullman Lumber, 9,772. And Noam Furniture, 10,064 and 54 cents. As part of the 2018 budget, the library board approved the use of $10,000 from fund balance for this project. It is indicated in the budget under 211-5500-500 one five three library interior renovation so that's pretty much the background of what's what's happened the, uh, as I indicated the uh, there's pictures in the packet as well as the uh, copies of the original bids that were submitted so I will entertain a motion that uh, um, we will award the bid for the carpet replacement and we will then determine which which one we want to bid uh, which one we want to award it to well I, I move that we uh, approve the project and award the bid to the low, lowest bidder that meets all the specifications of the bid request all right do I have a second second I have a motion and a second to uh, award the project uh, to the lowest bidder, when in this case would be Hiller Commercial Floors at 9200 um, Is there any discussion? Yes, there is. Um, between um, the time I've sent out the packet and today, uh, it's come to my attention that Pullman Lumber's carpet specs, carpet bid does not meet specifications. And so their bid needs to be voided. This Pullman's, you said? Pullman's, yes. And I spoke with the uh, Nate at Pullman, so he's aware um, that I've, that we're pulling his bid. Which is unfortunate, but that's the, that's the bidding process. I mean, we, we can't allow them to resubmit a bid because then we'd have to open it up to everyone to do so. And then that would take uh, delays 
and uh, just lengthen the, the overall process. I do have one question, and that was in the uh, meeting room downstairs. Mm -hmm. Why are you going to carpet again? We would like to maintain carpet uh, because of sound, uh, because new cats, there's been quite a difference since we pulled out part of the carpet and changed to a, a tile-like floor. There's a lot more echoing. It would be helpful to new cat to maintain the carpet for that purpose. And, you know, it looks, it looks okay to have the carpet up where the studio part of the meeting room is. What about on the uh, vinyl flooring coming in? Are you going to be putting something down here in the winter months? Yes. Okay. Um, we Some kind of a runner? Yes, that's what our maintenance technician yep. would like to do. Uh, we did talk to uh, Ryan Wire, who's the facilities manager for Park and Rec Department, who's worked with this material because vinyl plank flooring, flooring would be new to the library. And he said that he has no concerns with putting vinyl plank flooring out in that area. You notice that Hiller recommends putting out a different kind of carpet yep. um, in their bid. Uh, Ryan has no problem with putting vinyl plank flooring as long as you're covering it. Also realizing that no flooring is perfect. Carpet's going to wear. Vinyl plank flooring, you can have some issues with. Um, he, he made the point of specifically chairs and wheels rolling on it and you're going to want to cover that part up as well he said you're going to want to be careful to put something down out in the entryway for grit and just make sure that you're maintaining cleaning that area and picking up um, what, what's left is the vinyl cheaper than carpet oh uh, hiller is giving us the same price same price yeah that's indicated in his bid okay but chris raises a good point that the that the grit that would come in especially in the winter time from uh, putting down for snow and ice and such um, that's going to be detrimental regardless if it's carpet or right. if it's uh, vinyl so I mean Hiller made the point that he doesn't recommend vinyl plank because so much wet comes in off the off of that entrance I talked to Ryan about that and this is supposed to be waterproof you're gluing it down it's supposed to be waterproof so ryan does not have a concern about i, I think hillow's concern may have been more for a slip if it could get slick when it's wet so we just have to make sure that if it does get wet that it's uh you know dried up and we have the same problem at, at 3m too with uh, with some of the flooring that we put in um, and then we just have to make sure that we uh, keep it dry Any other discussion? All right, so we have a motion and a second, and we finished our discussion that uh, uh, we award the bid for the carpet replacement to Hiller Commercial Floors on the basis that they were one, the, the lowest bidder, and also uh, Pullman Lumber's bid had to be uh, uh, not considered because of their carpet specs did not meet our specifications. So all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carried. And do we know when this is going to be done? No. Okay. And I think that's it for all we need to have today. Any Anything under other business? All right. Not hearing any then. Uh, meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>